Got it. All right. Today's a spring break for, uh, day for you, right? Yes. Yeah, all week. But you got baseball still. Every single day. That's yep. good for you. It builds character. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, no free days. That's good. So, uh, what do you got tonight? A game? <clears throat> yeah, we play at uh, six thirty. Yep. Who's the victim tonight? Morristown East, maybe. Okay. Maybe more West. It's one of the two. I forgot. So. Got it. Yep. We had Lakeway Christian last night. Got them thirteen to two. Right on. Yeah. How did you play? I I played pretty good. I I started on the mound. I don't usually, but I got the first start yesterday. I had ten strikeouts in four innings. Yeah, the walks are not what I'm not going to talk about. But no, but it is but, is pitching something that you would like to do at the next level, or you're strictly a catcher? I mean. If that's the only way I can, if that's the way I'm going to get on the field, then I guess so. Yeah. But in a perfect world, I would just be a catcher. That's what I, that's what I like to do. So. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, uh, Brooks, Wright, Thank you so much for taking the time to, to join me. I, I find, uh, your, I guess, experience really interesting. Um, just because, uh, high school NIL, it's such a very new thing. Um, in Tennessee, and I, I think as of right now, it's 21 other states. Um, but you're really, I guess, technically probably one of the first deals in the state. Uh, as you signed with with B1, we started talking in, I think, December. Um, just just talk about what that experience has been like for you so far. Um, you know, it's definitely been great, you know, especially I'm getting a look at what business in, you know, like a grown-up world is like. So I'm kind of getting ahead, the, ahead of the game. But just the my time at D1 actually working out has been very helpful because before, you know, I would just go to the gym and do what I see other people do. Right. And I don't know if that's I don't I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't really do sports specific because I didn't really know how to. So I was just doing what I was what I've seen from other people. But um, I've, I've learned a lot working with Devin over here at D1 and um. Yeah, so I, I'm just well educated now on what I think I need to do. Right on, and you know, I guess such a thing that that people have to deal with at any gym really is going to the gym without a plan, and that can, you can waste time, and then you end up like kind of you know wasting uh, your energy and just not getting a whole lot accomplished. Right. No. Yeah. Devin over here, I, I I take my brother every morning. Not every morning. We go two mornings a week. Um, but yeah, Devin has has it planned out what we're gonna do and doesn't really let us not take breaks, but he keeps us going so we can get in and out and get our work in. But um, yeah, so I'm super happy about that. Now, what about from the high school level? You're a junior, right? Yes. Okay. So have other, uh, I guess, any of your peers kind of noticed the the deal that you're doing and uh, had anything to say about nil? Um, um yeah no for sure my my you know a lot of my teammates talk about it to me and I, I, that's pretty much that's pretty much it some other people some of my other friends do that aren't you know I don't play baseball with but um but yeah so people do people do yeah mm -hmm. I, I knew when it first got passed for college that was kind of one of the things that was really uh, I guess one of the fears <clears throat> that that you know in the locker room it would be an issue but I didn't know on the high school level if it would just be – I would have thought it would be more just like a you know supportive thing as opposed to on the college level. They kind of all think, you know, that should be me out there. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, what's that like? Nothing really. I mean, some some people kind of – some people are not, not like give me a hard time about it, right? But, you know, they're just kind of like, oh, these – these big guy or whatever just that kind of stuff but it's all mm -hmm. in it's all in good meaning so yeah right. but my friends and teammates are happy for me cool well, what about your commitment to tennessee talk about that because you've been you've been a verbal for a while right um what's today the 14th yeah so it, it's been two years and 362 days or something like that i committed I think it was March 17th of 2020. So right as the COVID lockdown was happening. Um, 
but yeah, so it's almost been three years and it's kind of snuck up on me, but um, I'm super happy about it. And it's been cool because, you know, I've, and that was my only look because, you know, I was 14. Um, so they were the first, first team school to look at me and hopefully the last, but um, uh, just, it, it was a, like a dream come through and I still got some work to do to actually get on the field, but just to, it's a step in the right direction of where, what my dream was because, you know, I would always go to games growing up when I was, since I was, I don't even know how old, um, just being a UT fan, going to football games, basketball games. Um, and I always wanted to be like those guys out on the field. And now I kind of realized the other day, I'm like, I'm going to be one of those guys that I wanted to be when I was little. So that's just, that's pretty cool. So yeah, just going to being, having the chance to play for my hometown team is going to be pretty cool. So, but how does that happen? Uh, Brooks, where, where you're 14 and you're getting to commit to a D one school like that? Like, is it, is it, uh, something where the coaches are out recruiting you heavily uh, even before that. You know what I mean? Like, how do they even find out about your talent that young um, for you, for to make an offer? Um, <clears throat> so when I was, I guess it was the summer of 2019. So it was the summer before I, uh, I committed. Um, I had the chance to go and play for Team USA at the – uh ntis which is like the it's like the step one of making their national team right so it's all the bunch of it's teams from like every region of the u.s um and they all go and play and so i made they take the top it's like an all-star team from that tournament and they take those kids and put them on then the next summer um yeah the next summer after that so i guess this was 2018 then 2019 um there were 72 kids i think from all around the country trying to compete and play on the on the national team and i guess you know there um coach elander saw me there play and um so i I, he told me that that's when they you know they first saw me play and he was impressed and then uh i guess i think it was two months after that maybe i went and played for um in the perfect game uh, select festival it's like the all-american games and 13 you so i guess and i was 14 um so then you know and that was broadcast on cbs sports so like you know a lot of people saw that and he um i didn't play too bad in that game so i kind of i guess that's really where he first saw me and then i went to a camp later that that fall in 2019 and then uh from there you know i got his phone number and he took me around campus and um, you know, we called every week or two weeks or so. And then, uh, for, for about two, three, maybe four months. And then in March, you know, they finally gave me an offer. So, and I took it a week later cause I was so excited to again, have the chance to play for Tennessee volunteers. And that's just yeah. a dream come. Now, will you still take like, um, official visits, um, or, or go through any of the recruiting process with anybody else that might show interest? over the next year because again you're just a junior yeah no i i wouldn't i wouldn't some people might but um I, I don't really see the point in it i mean that's something that some some you know like people that play football you know, football recruiting is much different than baseball recruiting like the i would say i don't know for sure but like it seems like the rules for football recruiting are less strict than baseball recruiting right so those football guys can take we can only take for baseball, five official visits um, and only one per school. So you have five schools to take official visits from. And in football, I don't know what the rule is. It doesn't, doesn't seem like there's a rule, like a, a limit. But um, no, I, I'm I'm not going to. I'm not going to. And do you have to fund that uh, visit? Like, let, let's say the University of Hawaii wants you to come take an official visit. Um, no, official visits, I think that's like – that that's the difference between the difference between an official visit and a non-official visit is that it's all funded by the school. So like I could go and basically have an official visit at UT, but I would I would pay for everything and 
um, an official visit would be, you know, they pay for my stay, they pay for my travel, my food, you know, all of our activities that we, that, you know, that they're going to take us through. Like it's, it's all on them. That's an official visit, but um, yeah. So no, that's just, that's the difference. Excuse me. Let's uh, I appreciate you helping to, to kind of explain that for the listener, what the difference between an official and unofficial is. Cause we hear those terms used so much. I want to hear about your sports journey from like being a little kid playing uh, little league ball all the way up to, to making it to this high level um, athlete that you are now. Yeah. Um, I'm always, you know, it's funny. All my friends, we joke that I'm good at one thing and one thing only, and that's baseball. <laughs> I'm not too bad at golf. That's my second favorite sport, but like I, I am absolutely useless playing basketball, football, soccer, like anything we try to do. I'm awful at, but I, mean, I played basketball every year from, when I was little to probably uh, 2019, maybe 2020. And then, cause I've had ankle injuries all the time. So I'm kind of cutting on, cutting down on all that. But, you know, I played, I played at Rocky Hill for little league baseball. That was where I kind of first started uh, my love for the game. And then I went from there to, I played, uh, I played, you know, travel ball from there to, I get, you know, still um, with a few different teams, but um, yeah, so I've got one more year of the travel ball left. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I was never really good at anything other than baseball, which I'm fine with that. Well, when did you really start to take kind of the training specifically for baseball seriously? Um, well, you know, I've taken, I used to take hitting lessons for a few years back when I was not, not little, but you know, I was maybe 11. Um, and then I didn't again until, uh, I didn't take in, I didn't start seeing other coaches for instruction until 2021. So I've been, I've been taking hitting lessons consistently, um, from, you know, my freshman year to now. Uh, but so I guess really high school, you know, I didn't really, not that I thought I was too good for hitting lessons and stuff like that. It's just that I didn't, you know, I didn't really think any much of it. Um, but now, you the know, value in it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really see the value in it, but now I'm, I'm definitely seeing it knowing that that's what it takes to keep progressing. So um, I'm having to do that now. Sweet. And uh, another thing you're, you're going above and beyond on is your yoga. Yeah. We, we had the event recently with uh tony vitello that that d1 our uh, yoga instructor uh ran out on the field at dick's house of sport and uh, i guess that's right in your uh backyard there uh the bearden area but that oh, was yeah. cool getting to be a part of that with coach q and vitello um do, do you do any yoga or any kind of, uh any other kind of like i guess preparation for your workouts um no, I mean that was the first time I've ever done yoga, and that was the first time I've uh, I've met Coach Q. Actually, first time I've ever met him. But um, I I don't. That was the first time I've done yoga, and I liked it because I you know I, I like to stretch. I'm a, I'm pretty flexible because I'm a catcher. So, um, also you're a kid. Yeah, I try yeah. to do those things, and I can't do it. Uh, I try to touch my toes, and the instructor's like, "You're supposed to touch your toes," and I'm like, "Lady, I'm trying." I'm yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, that's the first time I've ever done anything like that. And I liked it because, um, stretching is huge for me because, you know, I'm a catcher. I use my legs and, uh, just trying to keep, keep my muscles healthy. Um, it definitely, it definitely helps because, you know, I, I left, we did the yoga session. I left and went straight to Bearden to hit with some of my friends and I felt amazing. So I'm definitely going to have to start incorporating that into my warm ups and just everyday stuff. Uh, yeah, so I mean, stretching. Like, yeah, I guess that's pretty much what it was. Maybe a little different form of what I do, but um, stretching is is huge for me. You know, that's something baseball specifically that I've talked with uh, Tim uh, Volk at the Smokies. He's talked about how the players will really spend like forty five minutes warming up because I guess it's just something where you really have to uh, invest that time into your warm ups, or that's when you're going to pull a back or really injure yourself. Yeah, no, and I don't necessarily like if I don't have enough time, even before practices, like if I don't have enough time to 
to fully get loose. Like I don't feel comfortable on the field and I, you know, that's, that's not a recipe for success. Right. So, um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's big. Um, yeah. definitely a needed scheduled, uh, thing in practice and everyday warmups. Right. Talk about your experience so far with D one Harden Valley. And, and also how do you think this kind of training that you've learned, how it could help other athletes? It's been, it's been crazy because, you know, like I said earlier, like, you know, my workout experience before this, I would just go to the gym and do what my friends do. You know, the traditional, what you see people online working out, uh, that's what I would do. And it wasn't really <clears throat> baseball specific um, or athletic. It was kind of just, you know, just m getting muscular, muscularly strong, stronger, I guess. I don't know. But my experience here, it's, it's a whole different workout than what I would have ever known to do because um, just with some of the different movements and, uh, I mean, yeah, really, that's it. It's just, it's just movements that will, that will help me, you know, play better, perform better. And I've started to notice that. Um, so that, that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's been awesome with. Uh, and yeah. something I try to help folks understand is uh, at a school like Bearden, you're going to have a great uh, like kind of strength and conditioning program. And a lot of athletic departments have that, but, still i try to help them understand like <clears throat> you're still gonna get more you're still gonna get just that little bit of edge that's gonna set you apart from other athletes taking that extra time to go to a place like d1 no definitely um and really for for our, our workouts we worked out in the fall at baseball like every day uh in the fall but it was never really these type of these type of athletic movements and like fast twitch movements that uh would really carry over to the field. Um, but yeah, definitely going, you know, working out at D1, doing all the athletic specific movements and stuff is, is definitely helped my game um, in a way that I would have never known to do. So right. it's, that it's beneficial for, for sure. How, uh, how the, the beard and bulldogs look in this season? We're, you know, we're pretty, we're looking pretty good and pretty promising. We, um, we had our season opener last night. Like I said, we won 13 to two. We have a lot of pitching. We have 14 seniors <clears throat> on our team. So we have 14 seniors and then juniors and sophomores combined. We only have 10. So we're going to, we're going to take a big hit after this year, but um, we, we have a pretty deep roster right now. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Who is your favorite baseball player ever? I I don't I don't know. Um, I chose number twenty seven. You can I don't know if you can see it on the that mm -hmm. right there as a little sign UT sign my grandpa made me when I committed. But I've I've been wearing number twenty seven since I started playing travel ball. So that was probably twenty eleven maybe. So however long it's been since then, I've been wearing number twenty seven all because of Matt Kemp. If you, I don't, he, he was, he was like my hero back then. Cause I was a left fielder in, uh, in little league. And so was he, and uh, my favorite team was the Dodgers. Cause that's who I played for in little league. So, you know, that's how that becomes your favorite team. Um, so I, he, you know, growing up, he was my favorite. And then as he kind of faded away into retirement, um, I really just enjoyed watching a lot of people specifically catchers. Cause I have a really deep appreciation for that. So the, my favorite catcher I like to watch is um, he plays for the Yankees as much as I hate them. His name is uh, his name is Kyle Higishioka, and um, he, so you know, I like to. I mean him and uh, uh, Jose Trevino, um, really just all the great like JT Muto, just all the good catchers in the league. That's like that's what I want to be. So that's who I'm going to watch and study from. So. Yeah, that, that, those are my catchers really are my favorite players. Excellent. Excellent. Did you ever get a chance to work with uh, or speak with Evan Russell last season? No, <clears throat> I didn't know. But one of my friends that one of my friends at, at on my team at Bearden, who I've been friends with for as long as I've been playing baseball, 
knows him somehow. So mm-hmm. one of my friends, is, you know, told me about him um, personally, but no, I've never gotten to. Okay. Super guy. And now he's actually, he's already retired from playing. So he's mm-hmm. going to uh, get into coaching. So I thought really? that'd be pretty cool. I would love to get him in for, for some stuff here in East Tennessee, but <clears throat> yeah, he's a super guy and it was fun watching him kind of learn the position of catcher you know, as he's doing it last year, but he, uh, he did a great job. Um, what is your favorite workout exercise? Something we ask everybody. Well, um, I like to do heavy weight. So the most weight I can do on any workout is my deadlift. I, um, my, my previous, uh, deadlift max before I was at D one was, uh, I think it was four sixty five. I think, and that was two years ago, and that was really, I did like a workout program two years ago, three years ago, maybe, um, and I didn't really, I didn't really work out until now, but um, it shot up when, you know, my, I think it was, it may have been my first time at, like, at D1, and I deadlifted 500, and I definitely had more in the tank, but uh, it was like my eighth set or something, because I didn't know how, how far I could go, so I kind of just kept going up. Um, I stopped right there, but I definitely had more in the tank, but that's, that's probably my favorite. Um, cause I feel like that, <clears throat> that carries over to baseball well, because, you know, you're just working your fast twitch muscles and you're trying to move, move as quickly as you can. Um, especially from a crouched position too. So that, that, I feel like that helps me with catching too, just being explosive behind the plate. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine you've really got to pay some, uh, close attention to your, the health of your knees being a catcher yeah you know <clears throat> as much as i've caught which is a lot i've never had knee problems i'm gonna knock on wood on that one but uh never really i'm i'm extremely lucky i had a hamstring problem uh not too long ago i mean that's kind of passed over but um i've really never had knee problems so i hope i'm hopefully i'm not jinxing it but yeah yeah no. Well, and, and that's something I've learned too here <clears throat> since I've been working around these guys is the, uh, their expertise can help, help you train, but do it in a way that's not going to get you injured, uh, right. and in ways that will help you prevent injury when you're on the field. So those little, little things are kind of like unsung heroes in the training process, but it's, it's an extra little, uh, element to be added. No, for sure. I never really, you know, before I started working with Devin over here at D1, I would never, warm up before i would work out um you know i might i might get loose a little bit like that kind of thing and then i would lift um but i really feel like i've i've gotten my potential i brought out my potential by you know warming up and doing all sorts of things and i I feel like i've stayed healthy and i'm not really sore after workouts either i think that's probably because um you know I'm, i'm stretching beforehand and warming up the proper muscles and all that kind of thing. So, all right. Well, Brooks Wright, uh, Tennessee baseball commit. We are looking forward to watching you in the orange. Do you have a favorite Tennessee baseball player? Um, I would say I started to get to know uh, Cal Stark a little bit. You know, we, we talk a lot, almost every day on uh, on social media or whatever. I've I've met him, I think once, and he went to Farragut, uh, right down the road. Um, so we, you know, we have a little bit of a connection there, but I talk to him a lot and I like to watch him play. So I would say Cal. Awesome. I think he worked out here too. Did he? I think so. When he was, when he was growing up, I'll ask Devin, but I think he was one of those fair kids, a lot of fair baseball kids work out here. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I'll have to ask him. I, I never, I never knew about that. Cool. Uh, all right, man. Brooks, right. Thank you uh, so much for coming on the podcast, buddy. Yeah. Casey, thank you.